So welcome back guys to another video and today I'm going to be talking about some of my personal arcade memories. Some of the stories I have growing up during what I would look back as a very important time in gaming and I'm, I'm lucky enough that I grew up in the early 90s and I got to see the arcade scene as it was starting to blossom and I was old enough to appreciate it then and really look back on it and just have those treasured memories and you know gamers today are a lot less simpler than the gamers back then. I mean, back then we were just wanting to play a game that was as close to its arcade counterpart as possible. We wanted to relive going into the arcades and playing on the arcade cabinet. Now we have, you know, sites like Digital Foundry where we dissect games and we can tell you if it's 60 frames or if it's like 900p in dock mode, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, so it's kind of nice to talk about the simpler times. Now the first game I'm going to be talking about, my first memory, is probably one of the most embarrassing moments with the arcades. And, uh, man, you know, before the days of Walmart, there was a department store called Roses. Actually, Roses is still around. And even when I go in there, it's like going into the 90s because they still have like shrink wrap VHSs. But I used to go there a lot with my mom and I would, you know, rent movies. I'd rent video games there. I would like buy cassette tape singles. I'd buy toys. But one of my favorite things I would do is when my mom was at the register paying for whatever she was buying, I would go to the arcade cabinet and play whatever was there. And it would always be a different game. Well, one day they decided to install the G.I. Joe arcade game put out by Konami. And being a huge fan of G.I. Joe, my eyes stuck to it. I just had to go play it. Unfortunately, my mom had no money to give me. She was like, no, I don't have a quarter. So I would ghost it. And what I mean by that is, I think a lot of us did this when we were growing up. We would go to the arcade and we wouldn't really play it, but we'd push the buttons and move the joystick around. And I was doing that while I was waiting for my mom to pay for whatever groceries she was getting. And this kid, like, bumps into me. And I, I'm kind of startled and he goes and he starts doing the same thing. And I was like, hey, I was playing that to some degree. And the kid stuck his tongue out at me. I'm like, what the hell? You know, I was five years old at the time. And the kid looked at me and he says, you want to fight? What are you going to do about it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I want to fight. Now, granted, I was five years old. My only fighting experience back then was watching Popeye. And so I tried to, like, do the Popeye, like, like wind up my arm. And by the time I got to 12 o'clock, the kid just, like, punched me right in the face, like, right here. I could feel the force and the impact, and I was, like, in total shock. Being a five-year-old, of course, I started crying. My mom saw what happened. She starts freaking out. She tells the kid's mom. The mom starts freaking out on him, saying, what did I tell you about hitting people? Like, it was a reoccurring thing, and she starts beating him, and he starts crying, and it was so crazy. And, you know, when I think about G.I. Joe now, and especially a G.I. Joe to arcade game, it's like I still get that little pain in my temple. <laughs> when I got punched as a kid, but you know, that was how the arcade was, you know, there was no social media, it, you were there and you were, you know, talking to people and interacting and one of my favorite experiences with the arcades was the fighting games and being introduced to, say, Mortal Kombat. I remember I went to this convenience store that was right by my bus stop and we always called it the convenience store, we called it the little store because it had no name but it was a small store. And you'd go in and you'd see all the, you know, quintessential things that you would see in a, in a convenience store but in the back was like a pool table, a dartboard, and a couple of arcade cabinets. And one of those arcade cabinets was Mortal Kombat. And that completely blew my mind seeing a game like this. I mean, I was a big, you know, action movie fan. As a seven-year-old, I'd watch, you know, a lot of Steven Seagal and like Bloodsport and stuff like that. Stuff that I probably shouldn't have been watching, but I really enjoyed it. And seeing Mortal Kombat captured that essence that made me enjoy those movies. But you were actually playing as someone and you were beating up somebody else. And that was just completely mind-blowing. And, uh, you know, I would even think about times I would go to the skating rink. And I'll tell you guys, I'm not a big skater. Uh, I used to skateboard, but you know, on roller skates, I just never got into it. And my sister, though, she would go every weekend. Her and her friends would even like roll pennies to go to the skating rink. And 
I remember I would go there and I never learned how to skate. I would just, you know, tell my sister's friends that I didn't know how just so they would like hold on to me and try to teach me because, you know, they were older and I'm like, hey, what's up, you know? But when I wasn't trying to do that, I was playing some of the arcade games and I was introduced to not one, but two games that really changed my life. The first one would be Hammering Harry, this little platformer on I from iRim and I really liked this game because it was more of a consoleized game like you know playing arcade games i was used to playing like racing games or you know miss pac-man or whatnot but this was a game that i could see on the super nintendo and it i was like why why don't we have this and unfortunately hammering harry never came to the west it came out for the famicom in Japan and it came out on the Super Nintendo. It wasn't until a little bit later on with the PSP that we got Hammering Hero, which is like a 2.5 uh, revamped version of Hammering Harry, which I definitely say check out. It's a really, really fun game, but also I was introduced to a game that would completely change my life and that is Street Fighter 2. Now, I had played a little bit of fighting games before then, but Street Fighter 2 really spoke volumes to me. Something about this game really just struck a chord, and maybe it was Blanca. Maybe seeing, you know, the monster with the big orange hair, it just had so much flash to it. But also seeing the community, seeing, you know, people get together in groups and play this game. And I remember even beating some of my sisters, like guy friends. I'd, I would play against them and I would beat them, and that made me feel really good because I was really not that great at sports but I was really good at Street Fighter and that made me feel really good and Street Fighter was huge there were so many Street Fighter cabinets everywhere a matter of fact I remember going to a local Burger King and they had a Street Fighter 2 cabinet there forget the hamster tubes let's play some Street Fighter 2 and that that game right there just changed everything it changed the whole map and it's one of those games that I absolutely love but one of my favorite arcade memories I'm saving the best for last is when I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, I used to go there during the summer. My mom would work and drop me and my sister off. And I didn't like the Boys and Girls Club because like I said, I'm not big in the sports. I didn't really care to play basketball. I didn't care to play a whole lot of air hockey or, or pool or ping pong. It was just kind of boring. The only thing that I liked about the place is they had a swimming pool. So I would go swimming a lot and get really badly sunburned and watch constant showings of Space Jam. I've probably watched Space Jam so much at, at that summer camp at Boys and Girls Club that I can just recite the whole movie in my head. But one summer, they decided to take the abandoned weight room and turning it into an arcade. And they put not one, but three arcade cabinets. One was Toki, which I was introduced to by a Nickelodeon's Nick Arcade. I really loved that game. Super Hang On was like pole position, but you were actually on a motorcycle, and it was really awesome. I loved it. I love the fact that you can choose your soundtrack before racing. And also... Mortal Kombat 2. Now, Mortal Kombat was already mind-blowing, but playing Mortal Kombat 2 was just something else, man. It was everything that we love about sequels. It took all the blood and gore and hyped it up over 9,000. I, man, I just love Mortal Kombat 2. And we spent all summer playing those arcade games, so much so that nobody was really playing basketball. No one was even going to the swimming pool anymore. So they ended up actually closing down those arcade cabinets and taking them away. But, you know, I still remember, like it was yesterday, playing Mortal Kombat 2 and seeing kids take their beach towels and put them over to joysticks to do finishing moves. And that was the whole secrecy of the arcade scene that I really, really enjoyed. And uh, man, when I think about it, it makes me kind of sad because we don't have arcades like we did back then. At least not in my town. Uh, we don't even have like a barcade or anything like that. And I know some people are fortunate with fortunate to have one of those, but uh, unfortunately I don't. But this is where I want you guys to come in. I want you guys to share some of your arcade memories, some of your arcade stories. I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment below, make a video response, and if you make a video response, leave a link on the description, on the comments, so I can check it out and other viewers can see it as well. That would be just amazing. Anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching. If you want to stay on the know on this channel, be sure to hit that bell. That bell is going to be beside the subscription button, and this will notify you whenever there's future content coming out on this channel. Anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and tune in every Sunday and every Wednesday for a brand new video. And as always, happy gaming.
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my previous content. I recently did a video response to the Retro Bro talking about why emulation is better than the OG hardware. Very interesting discussion I wouldn't want you guys to miss. Also, be sure to check out my audio podcast, Excess Gaming Podcast. You can visit it on this YouTube channel with its own playlist, or you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Podomatic.com. Anyway, guys, thank you for all support, and as always, happy gaming.